Temporary facilities uh, are always an option. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, worked fairly well in the uh, in the World Cup um, in Qatar. Um, Qatar built a temporary stadium out of uh, Connex boxes, out of shipping containers, and and it, it worked. Um, of all the issues with that World Cup, that stadium wasn't one of them. Um, you can use uh, venues that maybe weren't designed uh, for the uh, the competition in in uh, question. Uh, for another purpose with a little bit of a retrofit. Again, this goes back to that last video. Maybe the building should have been um, designed a little more multi-purpose, but if it wasn't, you can always retrofit. Uh, there's Olympics examples of this. Uh, the Water Cube, uh, where Michael Phelps won eight gold medals, um, was home to curling uh, for the Beijing uh, Winter Olympics. Um, they called it the Ice Cube. Um, again, it's kind of... Um, emptied the pool, put something over top of it, and then put down ice for curling. Uh, in uh, LA 2028, um, they're going to use uh, USC's baseball field as their um, uh, auditorium, as their swimming venue. Uh, again, a little bit of a retrofit there, and that'll go back to being uh, USC's baseball field. Um, so that, that's an idea of temporary structures. You know, when we see these uh, for for other events, um, sometimes for one-offs, um, about 10 years ago, uh, there were a couple of uh, basketball games on aircraft carriers, things like that. Uh, the Atlanta Braves played a game um, in Fort Bragg, North Carolina on an Army base. That was a temporary facility. So sometimes temporary facilities are necessary, right? You're not going to build a full Major League Baseball stadium on, a, on an Army base. Um, that, that one's got to be temporary. And so uh, that, that's really how those come into play. Um, and temporary facilities can work. Um, again, usually it's in that mega event situation um, where you're talking about a World Cup and Olympics or something along those lines.